Hey, superstars. Figured you'd uh, press play as soon as I put a chip in my mouth. It's your best friend, Scott, and this is my October recap video. We got a lot of stuff to go over. The usual fare on the menu today. We got VRs, care packages, uh, purchases, and a little channel update. So let's dig in. Chip. My best friend Dan at Old Sarge Collects wants to see card purchases that were inspired by other YouTubers. This isn't a card, but this little Jet magazine I bought because Dom at Staven Sports picked one of these up at the National and he was excited to show me because he thought I'd like it. And then I ended up buying one too. Uh, speaking of the National, I like the story behind my Dobie rookie. The very first time I met Chris from Missouri, he hadn't started making videos yet, but we were at the YouTuber hangout in Atlantic City and he showed me a Larry Dobie rookie that he picked up and it was beautiful and it kind of stuck with me as a card that I needed to pick up too. So a year later at the National in Chicago, I see this one and I was thinking about buying it and Chris walks by right as I was mulling it over and he tells me to go for it, so I did. Uh, what else? Shane from Shoebox Legends, he's really into buybacks and that inspired me to pick up this Don Mossy buyback. And there's a couple of guys that Dan mentioned in his video announcing this contest. I picked up this Mr. Rogers card after John at 3D80s Kid showed off his. And just like Dan, I too picked up these Duke Stamps cards after Andrew at Nuff Said Cards showed them off. My best friend Rick at Vintage Oddball Cards has an interesting one. He wants to see our top 10 favorite card backs. I gotta start out with the 93 Upper Deck Dennis Cook. How can you not love that one? Here is Albert Bell, Christy Brinkley, and Some Random Baby, and the front of this card is pretty cool too. Here's my 1954 Bowman Larry Doby, where some kid was practicing his cursive or forging Larry Doby's signature or something. For some reason, I'm kind of obsessed with the 1950 Bowman No Copyright Backs. Here's my Al Rosen rookies with and without the copyright, and uh, here's Allie Clark and Sam Zoldak. Here's my 1973 Rick Auerbach, gifted to me by the Vintage Composer, because Rick's nickname is Reindeer. And then Rick at Vintage Oddball Cards, he hates these T207s, but the back of this one is pretty great. It says, Ivan Olsen, Cleveland's willowy shortstop, while a Swede is not one of the terrible. This seems strange, as most Swedes and all Ivans are supposed to be known as the terrible. And lastly, you may be asking why I like this trashed back on this T206 card. I like it because without it, I wouldn't have been able to afford this absolutely beautiful Nap Lajoie. And the best part was Rick was right there with me when I bought it and he encouraged me to do so. And actually that's not the first Nap Lajoie I bought with a trash back. Here is the portrait too. My bestie John, Wade Boggs fan, is celebrating 1,500 subs with a giveaway, and he simply wants to see our number one favorite card. Easy peasy. If you've been watching me for any length of time, you know my Grail card is my T206 Cy Young portrait, hands down. I started my Grail Quest series a few years ago, where I went about funding the purchase of this card by offering to do some commissions. The response to that was just absolutely amazing. I had so many people very eager to help, and the whole project not only funded this card, but it really gave me a ton of confidence within this YouTube community, if that makes sense. Um, I really didn't have any idea before then that my artwork would be in such high demand, and it is, it's a really neat feeling to see all that stuff that I've made on so many videos. So not only did I put in a ton of work to get this card, but it also embodies that uh, YouTube sports card community love. My best friend Doug at Don't Talk to Robots, he wants to see five red cards and give a shout out to someone with less than 500 subs. So are you ready? See what I did there? So I'll start out with the very first card I bought when I decided to get back into collecting in 2018. That's this T206 Ted Easterly. I'm showing a lot of T206 cards today. Here's a very red 49 Bowman Lou Boudreau. And we'll top this VR off with a triple shot of Al Rosen. We've got the 52 tops. And I don't know which is redder, this red, red heart or this red, red man. And that shout out, let's bring up our little red TV. That seems appropriate. Okay, um, let's go with my favorite Reds fan, Shannon from Back to the Cardboard. He's got 498 subs and he recently made his first video in like nine months talking about how he'd been in a rut. But uh, he's always made really funny and creative videos, so go over there and encourage him to stick around because YouTube is a much better place when he's making content. 
My best friend Jason at The Basement Card Collector is celebrating his 50th TTM video, and he wants to hear about channels that we're thankful for, you know, guys that we're kind of extra close to. And I'm genuinely thankful for all of my best friends, and I really hate to single out so few channels, but you know, there are prizes involved, kidding. Um, I'm thankful to Steven, AKA Math Bowler, who comes and hangs out with me at my LCS or the occasional card show. And we often enjoy a hearty lunch or dinner. And I'm thankful for Tony Black, who knows about all of the finest eateries between here and Chicago. And I'm thankful for guys like Eddie from Eddie's Cardboard Chaos, Jake from Legends Never Die, and the Drew from the Drew at Vintage Legacy. And of course, Doug from Decon. These are guys who are always fun to talk to and bounce ideas off of, or tell me how amazing my most recent and usually lame pickups are. And I'm thankful to Dylan from Double D and James from Elite Hunters for being extra supportive and encouraging when it comes to my art. And of course, I'm thankful for Four Leaf, my partner in crime and national buddy. And I guess I'm thankful to Don from Don's Field of Dreams, who pretends to hate me, but deep down, I know he really thinks I'm swell. And I kind of think he's swell too, but don't tell him that. I could go on and on, but we got a lot more to do. I have been on record as saying that I don't really care for YouTube shorts, and I still don't. And you may be wondering why then have I made a short every day in October? If you've not seen them, there's an artist event every year called Inktober, where we are provided with prompts every day to do a little ink piece. So I've decided to try it this year, and I took it a step further by making baseball-related pieces every day. And then I make little videos on my Instagram account that I kind of neglect, but it really doesn't take any extra effort to upload those videos as YouTube shorts as well, making me quite the hypocrite. But for those of you who have watched all of them, or even some of them, I really appreciate it. It definitely has been challenging, and some of the pieces are better than others, but it's been really good for me to make it a point to make some art every day. All right, care packages. My best beardly non-misfit friend sent me a little something. Let's see what we've got. Dear Bestie, I finally found something you didn't have of Mossy because it's from the basement. Yes, that basement. Take care, superstar. God bless your best friend, Jakery Lucius Brewer III of Legends Never Call Themselves Leprechauns. Aw, I was in the live stream when Jake bought this and I was kind of jealous. Look at that beauty. So cool to get the perfect card for me from the basement collection. Thanks, Jake. I love it. And this one is from the nicest man in the world, my best friend, Orlando. It says, hi, Scott, I'm sending you a little something for being such a superstar. I thought of you when I saw it. I believe this is a 1910 AE-162 Helmar card. The Ohio card belongs in your collection. Thanks for all you do for the hobby. Your best friend, Orlando. No, thank you, Orlando. Oh, man, that is gorgeous. I saw Orlando show this off on his channel, and I thought it was really neat. It's even better in person. So cool. And hey, I recently picked up a little Helmar box. I'm going to display this with the box. Thanks again, Orlando. This one is from my best friend Dan at Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. He reached out and he asked me to help him out with an Al Rosen video. It says, Scott, thanks for coming on my show to talk about Al Rosen, your bestie Dan. I always love talking about Al Rosen, so heck yeah. Thank you, Dan. Dan sent over some unnecessary awesome sauce. Let's see. Beautifully centered 57 Herb score, 1960 Mud Grant, 1964 Vic Davalillo. That one's super sharp. Ooh, 1964 Wags. I've been looking for this one. That's awesome. And a 65 Birdie Tebbit. Sweet. Oh, nice. We got a Stadium Club Rainbow Foil Sticks McKenzie. That is a really cool looking card. Whoa, that's number 25. Crazy. Thank you, Dan. You are too kind, sir. And this one fits right in there. 64 team set complete. I love it. I did not recognize this address. Hmm. Hey, this is from my best friend, Mookie Chilson. It says, Scott, you're a freaking inspiration. Please don't stop ever. That's it. Your best pal, Mookie. Let's check this out. Whoa, if there was ever the perfect wrapping paper, this is it. Not to be like one of those old ladies that saves the paper, but we got Bill Veck on here, Bob Lemon, and Satchel Page. That's all kinds of awesome. Hmm, tiny TV salt and pepper set? What the what? The perfect paper and, and now the perfect salt and pepper set. We've got the image from Don Mossy's 1955 Bowman rookie card. That is hilariously awesome. Oh man, I love it. Hey, you twist that little dial and the salt and pepper shakers come up. Mookie, you've outdone yourself. That's why you're my best friend, buddy. This one is pretty in pink, just like Molly Ringwald. It's from my best friend, Iconic Al from Iconic Baseball. He texted the other day and he said he had something cool I needed to have. And we have a little running joke about him not thinking Jim Tomey is iconic enough. 
Dearest Scott, it was so great to see your beard and the face contained within at the National this year. I really enjoyed our brief hang time. I always enjoy chatting with you too, Al. I was randomly gifted a small card collection earlier this month, and it contained a true one of one that I knew only had one rightful home, the PC of Mr. Reindeer. It takes an iconic Al to give an iconic Al. Enjoy, sir. Love your best friend, Al. Well, I am intrigued. Oh, wow. There's an Al Rosen autograph. But if you look there, this is indeed a one of one. I've, I've, I've never had one of these before. This is, wow. You guys are really spoiling me this month. I am not worthy, but I love it, Al. It's definitely got a good home now, sir. Another care package? Really? This is from my besties, Dustin and Blake. <laughs> okay, a Twinkies hat. I guess they do know how to keep warm up north. This says, to our best friend Scott, I didn't even have to make it up that time. Winter is coming. Sure, you have that beautiful beard to keep your face warm, but you'll need something to keep your ears warm and show the world where your allegiance lies. Your best friends, Dustin and Blake. All right, that's pretty funny. Thanks for the laugh, guys. Now, this is just getting silly. This last care package is from my best friends over at Three Good Nerds. It says, hi, Scott. I'm sorry that your autograph Bad News Bears card got lost in the mail. I picked up another one for you. I also threw in some TTM fuel in the form of a little retro rip. Hope you have fun with it. Your best friends, Justin and the Nerds. Here's an autographed David Pollock card. I won this in a contest a while back, but it got lost in the mail. And I told Justin not to worry about it, but he didn't listen. But this is really awesome, though. And sweet sticker. 90 Fleer. Blech. Well played, sir. But we got some 89 score, 90 Bowman, 91 Leaf, 91 Stadium Club, and 88 Tops, and a Donruss pop-up. I haven't ripped anything in a while. This should be a lot of fun. Looks like I'm going to have to get my TTM license back, though. Let's open up this pop-up pack. We got Jim Rice, Rhino, and Brooke Jacoby rocking that sweet stash. Nice. And then there's Lance Parrish. Awesome stuff, guys. I'm excited about ripping into these. Thank you. I went to a card show in Pittsburgh recently. Again, I asked Theo if he wanted to hang out and he said he was washing his hair or something stupid. And I asked Don if he wanted to go and he said, sure, but then he never showed up. So I hung out with Math Bowler, who's cooler than both those guys anyway. And I picked up this Max Alvis rookie. Math Bowler tried to convince me that this was a Bob Bailey rookie, but that's just silly. And I also picked up this Hal Trotsky autograph. He was a big power hitting first baseman for the Indians in the 30s. But unfortunately for Hal, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, and Hank Greenberg were also first basemen in the 30s, so he never got much attention. From eBay, I picked up another Destruction Crew card. This is probably the nicest one that I have, but I'm still on the hunt for the perfect one. I think this one was $10, so I couldn't not buy it. And uh, here's an old autographed Venezuelan Alvaro Espinosa sticker that I didn't have. These are really cool, so I saved them for last. I've been looking for a Bill Vec autograph for a little while, but I wanted it to be something special. So I found this letter from the Cleveland Baseball Corporation dated September 17th, 1948, less than a month before they won the World Series. Dear Miss Blanco, thanks so much for writing us on September 13th. We appreciate the suggestions and comments of our Indians fans, Lou, that would be Lou Boudreau. Uh, Lou is doing the best job he can, and as a matter of fact, well, not a perfect job, a pretty good one. Guess there will always be a difference of opinion regarding the managing of a ball team, but he's doing his best, so let's stick with him. And then it goes on a little about radio coverage. Very truly yours, Bill Vec. So, number one, awesome. Can you imagine a team owner personally writing back to a fan within four days in the midst of a tight postseason race? Uh, two, when Vec bought the team, he wanted to replace player manager Lou Boudreau with Al Lopez, but Lou was a fan favorite and he decided to stick with him rather than have angry fans right from the start. I bet the Indians won the pennant by 10 games. Don't put the whammy on us, Johnny. How's Junior performing, Lou? You mean Satch? We haven't got any other kids. He looked very good, Bill. He's in good shape and his arm is strong. Said he wanted to pitch the opener. Are you going to let him, Lou? I'm sure thinking about it. Well, it might not be a bad bet. Then we'd at least draw some people. It's, it's neat to see him defending Lou a short time later. And three, not only did the Indians go on to win the World Series the following month, but Boudreaux actually won the MVP that season. I gather that Miss Baby Blanco was complaining about his managing, but still, fans got a fickle, I guess. And Vec was still gracious enough to respond. But wait, there's more. This one is dated July 15th, 1946, from the Cleveland Baseball Company in League Park, also to Babe E. Blanco, but mistakenly addressing her as Dear Sir. 
As you undoubtedly know, the ownership of the Cleveland Ball Club has recently changed hands. The new owners anticipate making numerous improvements from time to time for your increased enjoyment. Obviously, the most important thing is to improve our ball club, and we are taking whatever steps are possible in this direction. And then it talks about bigger changes that will probably happen next season. Then it says, we would appreciate any suggestions you might be able to make to increase your enjoyment of the games. And should you find time, why not stop in at our office so that we can meet you in person? Very truly yours, Bill Vec. Now, this one is secretarial, but I still thought it was neat that ownership would encourage fans to come visit them in their offices. That's crazy. And this is also from League Park. One of the first things Vec did was move the team permanently from Cozy Little League Park to the Gargantuan Municipal Stadium, which sat 80,000. Players didn't like Municipal because it was too big, but Vec wanted to set attendance records and get as many people out to the games as possible. So I probably should have made a whole separate video about these letters, but you know me, I gotta try to cram everything into one package. And on that note, let's say our thanks and goodbyes. So that's it for now. I gotta thank Old Sarge Collects, Vintage Oddball Cards, Wade Boggs Fan, Don't Talk to Robots, and Basement Card Collector for the VR prompts. Thanks to Legends Never Die, A Collector's Dream, Dan's Vintage Baseball PC, Mookie Chilson, Iconic Baseball, Dustin and Blake, and Three Good Nerds for the amazing care packages. Way too generous, as usual. Go check out any of those guys if you're not familiar. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Love your hobby and make it unique to you.